If you were to ask me about the best young quarters in basketball, one of the teams that comes to mind immediately are the Detroit Pistons. They have done a really good job at finding young talent over the past few years, and they have put themselves in a position where they are likely just a piece or two away from making that leap to a playoff team in the next few years. In today's video, I'll be going over why I'm so excited about the Pistons' future and why I believe they can be a future contender in a few years. Obviously, with the Pistons' future, it starts with Cade Cunningham, the first overall pick in the 2021 NBA Draft and their likely future franchise player. Cade may have struggled with his efficiency as a rookie, but there were a lot more positive signs than negative ones when watching the tape. He fits the mold of what teams look to build around in today's NBA, which is a big guard wing piano creator. Cade showed a lot of signs that make me confident that he still is the best long-term player from the 2021 draft. He showed potential as a scorer that can take over games. He showed potential as a lethal passing playmaker that can control the boy, and he even showed signs of being a good defender, although he does need some work in that area. Cade also displayed maturity, leadership, and poise as a basketball player that are rare for his age. He has all the tools from both a basketball skill set and intangible perspective to be a franchise player. Cade has the potential to be a 25 plus point per game scorer, one of the 5 to 10 best passers in basketball, and a good defender at his peak. Players like that aren't just all-stars, those are players that we consider superstars, players who build contenders around, and I think Cade has the potential to be one of those players, it's why he was the number one player on my board, and one of the best prospects I've ever evaluated and nothing about his rookie season has changed my stance on that. However, a potential franchise player can only carry a franchise so far. It's also about the talent around that player that determines the ceiling of a team. And I think the Pistons have done an outstanding job of that, especially during the most recent draft. Detroit, in my opinion, had the best draft in 2022. In fact, from a pure prospect perspective, it's one of the most impressive drafts I've ever seen. Let's start with their fifth overall pick, Jaden Ivey. Jaden Ivey was the third best player in the draft in my opinion, and when the Pistons landed the fifth pick, I didn't know if they would have a chance to even get him. I thought Ivey was going top four, whether it was to the Kings or to a team that the Kings traded their pick to, as Ivey was a real hot commodity in the trade market for teams trying to move up. So when the Kings took Keegan Murray at four, who's a solid player in his own right, the Pistons were able to strike gold by landing Jaden Ivey. Not only because Ivey, in my opinion, was a top 3 player in the draft and you get him 2 slots lower than his value, but also because Ivey to me was the dream scenario for the Detroit Pistons. I think Ivey is the perfect guard to put next to someone like Cade Cunningham. Ivey is a 2 guard that's capable of handling some on-ball reps at times. He's been praised for his athleticism from both a speed and a vertical explosion perspective. He's an improving suitor that at the very least I believe can keep a defense honest. He's a dangerous slasher due to his speed, vertical, and body control, and he's a decent passer as well. But what makes him such a good fit with Cade is the fact that he's really effective in both on-ball and off-ball offense settings. He can play off of Cade as a cutter and a growing suitor, he can be a threat without the basketball in transition with Cade as the ball handler, and he's somebody that can be a threat with the basketball in transition as well. On top of this, he's somebody that I believe will be capable of handling some primary focus when Cade is on the bench. Think of a role like Jalen Brown in Boston next to Tatum to a certain extent when you think of how Ivy could fit next to Cade. Obviously not a one-to-one -one comparison to say the least, I think Ivy is a better passer that is more than willing to and probably will be able to handle point guard responsibilities at times, which I don't think I would ever have Jalen doing. And I also think Jalen is a better suitor than Ivy. Jalen is one of the more underrated suitors at 38% on almost 7 3-point attempts per game over the last 3 seasons, but the same idea of being able to play off an offensive hub while handling some offensive responsibility as an on-ball creator is what I think Ivy will be. However, Ivy isn't the only reason I'm excited for the Pistons draft, because after a trade that sent the Hornets 13th overall pick to the next, then that pick was actually traded from the Knicks to the Pistons, this allowed Detroit to land Memphis big man Jalen Duran with that 13th overall pick. Now you might not be able to tell based off looking at him, but Jalen Duran is going to be the youngest player in the NBA this upcoming season. I know, based off his 6'10", 250 pound frame with good athleticism and movement skills, it may be hard to believe, but that is the case. 
Jalen Duren, in my opinion, was an absolute steal at the 13th overall pick. I had him as one of the five best prospects in this draft, at number five to be exact. And I also believe he should have been the pick for the Pistons at fifth overall if Ivy was off the board. So the Pistons get, in my opinion, their top two options they should have been choosing between at that fifth overall pick in the same draft. Duren is one of the most physically NBA ready big prospects I've ever seen which given his super young age, he doesn't even turn 19 until November, is actually insane. I feel like Duran was someone people were skeptical of due to his lack of shooting ability, but I think the focus on that took away from what he can do, because he's an incredible young prospect. Let's start with the defense, because I believe Duran is one of the best defensive prospects ever for his age. He's capable of playing multiple defensive coverages, he can drop, switch, heads, He's not quite a 1-5 through five defender, those aren't really as common as people want you to believe they are, but he can hold his own on switches when asked to, he's a really good soft pocket due to his long arms, a reported 7-5 wingspan, which based off of watching him play, I think is true, and his ability to time his box well. But what I'm most impressed by with his defense is just how smart he is on that end of the floor. He's excellent at being defensive coverages and is a really good communicator on defense. He calls out plays and he tells his teammates where they need to be on defense. He's one of the smartest defensive prospects I've ever seen and that is even more impressive given how young he is. Yes, he has his defensive lapses and does have his silly fouls, but I also think he is shown to having a lot of positive indicators for potential all defense level ability. And remember when watching him play his rookie season, that he should be in college right now. He's younger than some of the 2023 draft guys, he's playing a level up and that level happens to be the best league in the world. Now the elephant in the room is his offense. I think he's going to do a lot of typical non-offensive oriented big man stuff on offense, run the floor, roll to the basket, catch lobs and dump offs, get putbacks, but I think he's going to be a better passer than his Memphis numbers indicate because I think he's a really good passer and he didn't get to showcase that at all at Memphis. I could see him being used in a Robert Williams role as a passer, being a connecting hockey assist type passer in a way. In fact, Rob Williams is actually a pretty good comp for Jalen Duran, one of the few draft comps I liked from this cycle. Ivy and Duran are two important pieces for the future alongside Gabe Cunningham, but they aren't the only pieces that are worth talking about. Isaiah Stewart aka Beef Stew is a high motor undersized big that is expanding his shooting range so he can play some more minutes at the 4 and maybe fit next to Jalen Duran better, while also proving me wrong at just about every turn since he got drafted and willing to find LeBron James even. Sadiq Bey may have been inefficient this year, especially compared to his rookie year, but I think in a more restricted offensive role where he's just asked to do more what he's good at and not try to force the issue as much, I really like him as a 3 and D wing for them moving forward. Marvin Bagley is a really good rim running lob threat for them that seems to have found a home in Detroit. I don't think he'll ever live up to his draft status, but I do think that playing with Cade Cunningham, if you're a lob threat, you're going to be effective in an offensive setting. And it may be a slim chance for Killian Hayes at this point, who I don't know if he'll ever be the guy considering who they draft in the top five. But I still think there is a chance for him to be a solid backup guard for them as a passer and defender, which is actually pretty good in those areas, but the scoring is still pretty rough. The Pistons have a lot that you look for in a young rebuilding franchise. A potential franchise player, a potential star that fits really well with that potential franchise player, and potential good role players and above average starters that fit well with the roster. I don't think the Pistons will be good this year, I definitely think they're going to be below 500, but I do think they could make a run for that 10 seed spot, but I think getting one more piece in that 2 or 2 3 class, they have a chance to be a special team, and I already think they do already, but getting one of those guys, because 2 or 2 3 is a special, special draft class, that is a chance to make Detroit a very good team for a very long time. But that's the end of this video. If you made it to this point, thank you so much. Again, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, do all those things. Be a big help to me. It's the best way to help me out and help me grow as a content creator. Also, make sure you go check out my video essay channel. 
did the video of watching Yu-Gi-Oh! GX with my guy Sam and Tyrese from the Strickland. In that video, of course, that of me just reviewing every episode of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? So if you want more content like that, you can click there. Click the icon here to subscribe if you haven't already, or check out other videos. And a video that YouTube will recommend from this channel will pop up over here. That being said, have a nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.